I have a thought experiment for you, uh, Josh, just as uh, the way my brain thinks. I, I want to think a little bit from a game theory perspective here. I see a lot of people out there, Sox fans, people kind of who are into prospect stuff or whatever, they are very, very anti Jack Keggs, the, the, the Florida guy. And they're anti him because there's an old, you don't draft the, uh, the, you know, the, the corner bat, the, the first base only guy, yada, yada, yada. And it harkens back to something I always heard Keith Law talk about where you should never draft a high school pitcher in the top half of the first round. Just, and this is a play on base rate. This is like, well, the base rate of these guys fail in, in these spots. And so you, you set yourself up a, a rule, an edict. I never do this sort of thing. But mm -hmm. if everyone thinks like that, isn't it likely that those players start to become undervalued because of that thought process? And the way I look at this is I get what Keith Law is saying. But when I'm drafting in the first round, if I were up, I'm trying to draft Dwight fucking Gooden. I am not trying to draft the guy who comes to the major leagues and gets you four war and then he's gone. I want to draft a superstar. And so is it possible that this Jack Kags guy from Florida is maybe becoming underrated and maybe Sox fans as a whole should not fear if they end up drafting him fifth overall? Jack Peggione, his sophomore year, led the country in home runs, and in this year, he was in the top five. I mean, he's had back-to-back -back seasons where he bashed over 30 home runs. Watching him against Hagen Smith, he went 0 for 3, but he had two balls in play that exceeded an exit velocity of 110 miles an hour, and he did not strike out, which is something that Travis Bazana and Braden Montgomery cannot say. And Montgomery had the platoon advantage because he's a switch hitter, and Smith embarrassed those two, and Again, Bazana Montgomery may also go in the top five of this draft class. They may actually be selected ahead uh, of Hagen Smith uh, in the top 10. The thing about Caglione, if the New York Yankees were selecting the top five, slam dunk, that's where he's going. Okay. And everybody <laughs> would fear that draft pick. Fear that draft pick. Could you imagine someone like Caglione hitting at Yankee Stadium? My Lord, the Yankees have another 40-plus home run potential type of bat <laughs> in Jack Lagneon. Who cares if he's limited defensively? They have right. money to spend everywhere. They just wanted the best value. But for everybody else in this top 10, it just doesn't work that way right now, with the okay. exception of Cincinnati. And I think that's where it's been interesting with the latest rumors that Caglione has spoken to both Cleveland and Cincinnati. And according to ESPN's Kylie McDaniel, Cleveland is serious about taking Caglione number one overall. So White Sox fans, don't fret because he's not going to be on the board. I think he's going to be taken before he gets to pick five. So let me reverse this back to you, Beef. Okay, if Caglione is not even take, he's, if he's not even on the board – then why were White Sox fans so worried? And should they be first to thinking of like, well, wait a second. If he goes number one overall, what do I have wrong here? <laughs> why, why, why didn't I want him? Why, 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 why didn't I want to be with him? Yeah, I, I, I don't know how much of it is is like you just watched a, a, a first base only bat fail. But you can't think like that. I mean, like Frank Thomas was kind of a for, was going to be first base only, also, and like you picked the mm -hmm. Sox picked them seventh overall, and other teams in front that didn't pick Frank Thomas are probably kicking themselves, right? So I'm not saying that, you, but we can't always just go base rate on everything. Like, oh, because this has failed in the past. Every uh, draft class is different. Every athlete's different. Some of them are are more conditioned to make this stuff. And I'm not saying I don't know if this guy's gonna be good or not, but just hearing it constantly has me thinking. Uh, just from a contrarian standpoint, if all of you believe this, there's a chance that it's not right. It's It could be wrong about, about a player like this. And Caglione, the player comp that I have for a beef, Matt Olson. Now, we didn't used to think a lot <laughs> I would love Matt of Olson. Matt Olson. <laughs> then he went to Atlanta, and he hit over 50 home runs. And yes. what have we learned in Major League Baseball for the teams that are serious about winning championships? All go far, team go far, especially in October. And power is coveted. And when it comes to power in this draft class, Aglione has proved it two years in a row. It is a longer track record than Charlie Condon. 
The thing with Caglion is that he has incredible whiff rates uh, where right. it would not shock me if he struck out 30 plus percent of the time in professional baseball. Okay. But again, beef, it brings back to this question and what I brought up at the beginning part, it's the best player available at the price point we want to sign and that we could develop. Yep. And if any of these teams watching the film and watching Caglione this year, who greatly cut down his strikeout rate, even though his whiff rate was still like 39%, which is crazy. Yeah, that's Maybe they saw something in video, a small tweak that we could help reduce that whiff rate greatly, but still be able to harness that power right, because that power is legit. It's far greater. Far, 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 far greater than what Andrew Vaughn and Spencer Torkelson showed during their years back at Cal and Arizona State. And Caglione did this against the best pitching in the country in the SEC. So I think that's why Caglione is probably not escaping Ohio in this draft. I think he's going to go number one or he's going to go number two overall. And now White Sox fans could be like, oh, I'm so great. I'm so glad the White Sox did not take a first baseman at pick number five. And then five years from now, damn it, Caglione is just owning the White Sox right now. Absolutely. I can't wait for it, John.